this is Mark Mosier. I'm here with Robert Edgar, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his simultaneous opposites engine. Hi, Robert. Hey, Mark. Thanks, and uh, I'll show you a little bit here. Um, I've programmed this, been programming it the last couple of years in Max MSP Jitter. So some of the program is opening up now. So it just all popped open here in different uh, pieces. Um, I've programmed it modularly, so this is one of the sequencers, and it is a 12-tone sequence that treats, uh, it'll select um, 12 notes of a scale and um, scramble them, play them as a tone row, uh, which repeats. And then um, it'll do the same for images, so it'll pick 12 shots within a video clip and play them as a tone row also. So we're getting kind of a serial composition for visual as well as the uh, audio. And this is all part of the program. This is the main section um, that is divided up into different modules so that uh, each one has a different function. So if you were programming in C and you'd have different modules, kind of the uh, color sections here would be kind of like that. How, how much uh, time have you put into the in, the uh, application so far? God, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. The uh, uh, the uh, it's it's been a lot. It's been a couple of years that I've been working on it. I have I'm I've just got my laptop here, but as you saw the other night, I've got a couple pedals. So this is uh, uh, organizes my input from one of the pedals. Um, this takes uh, a MIDI in and um, selects text that comes up so that I can show one text after another and step through it as I like. Um, here's audio for playing um, uh, digital audio that is in the computer. Um, and I can also play audio off the uh, clips themselves. Um, here's audio for playing off a uh, uh, triggers from software synths and, and playing internally there. And uh, this manages in MIDI inputs for the whole thing. This is uh, a player for one voice at a time. So you can get the idea there's a bunch of stuff here. So you've just created all these different modules to basically uh, solve problems and allow you to perform with the controllers you have running? Yeah, these are all, everything that I'm showing you is, is kind of a tool that is part of simultaneous opposites and mm -hmm. they are their own controllers. I mean, a lot of what I used to have to tote around as hardware is software in this now. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... Uh, when I don't have a, uh, uh, I, I usually trigger this with and modulate it and, and such with a MIDI guitar. Mm -hmm. But when I'm programming, um, I don't put all that together. So I've got a little uh, tool here that I use that allows me to um, uh, set up um, emulators. So instead of my pedals and the, the MIDI guitar, I can set up things here so that uh, they can emulate the, the use of the different strings, six strings, and uh, whether things play back or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I see, yeah. I see. What I do is take a look, uh, whoever's watching this, uh, you might try taking a look at um, vimeo.com and searching for simultaneous opposites. And there's about 60 clips that I've done over the last couple of years that are up there that show how it's... Um, progressed and also shows the output and what I'm showing you right now is the uh, is the program itself so mm -hmm. this is what I work on you can see the now I've got two clips that are playing here and um, each clip um, is jumping around kind of single frame or a couple frames at a time at say frame one to frame 100, and frame two to frame 101, and it'll it'll keep jumping through there, and we're seeing both of them uh, going as as it uh, takes off. 
I can put this on full screen so you can see some of the visual um, um, overlapping, very soft kind of uh, um, superimposition, but it's superimposed not just visually but also through time. And um, so it's an effect that. Uh, so it's you as if you're doing like real time printing of like an image from two reels down to like one composite? It's like that, very much like that, except that also there's a temporal element because of this jumping. And so if you were to just do a simple superimposition of two uh, video clips, it wouldn't have uh, the um, bite that simultaneous opposites gives because of this, this jumping quality as it goes through. So here I can stop one of the screens and now we've just got one piece of video that's jumping around. I see. And we can go in and let's see what I can do. And just have one piece show up. I like got that. the in the background, so what I'm doing here, there's just one of the pieces, so it's jumping back and forth. And what we hear... Do you know what happens when you toss it to fluorescent? So the audio is coming from the video clip, right? Yeah, you can hear this now. It sounds mm -hmm. engine-like. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, I can get sound here that plays back one frame at a time. So if you think of a movie, and you think of one frame at a 24th of a second, um, I'm actually playing the, um, I'm creating compositions by playing single frames and jumping around the, uh, the, the video clip for that frame. Right. And um, that creates its own time, which isn't exact because the video clip it may have further to jump or it may be a more complex image to decode. And so you get something that isn't arrhythmic and it's not rhythmic, it's irrhythmic. And so while this is going on, often I'm playing guitar and I'll play and try to bring out the, and play with the irrhythmic patterns um, that come in. Um, other times I'll just play a standard rhythm, but I think what's one of the things that's interesting is the, the ability to play that irrhythmic nature. I can jump here through the screens. Right now it's making a 24 frame jump um, as it traverses here, I can make that 49. Um, and then you so can modulate moving. that parameter with a MIDI controller. Right yeah. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, the bend of the string. Now I'm just four frames, so you can see it's a very short cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very short cycle, but it's not quite a repeating because every time it goes back, it adds a frame right, and so jumps forward. Uh, as it goes through. You can see here where it's moving yeah, a couple it. frames at a time um, kind of through the uh, through the piece. So while that's going on I can add the other. Now I can also while it's going there are different ways that you can add the videos. So here's one that's an additive. This is a uh, another looting as, I as these so you can add put effects on there to each other kind of effects yeah or I can set these so you're doing like an XOR of the images and that kind of thing right that type of thing and now here I'm I'm having it go so every time it um, plays a different frame it's also changing the way that the frames get added and printed wow so um, I can do that or I can move it here so that it doesn't not quite so often so here, and all of these have a different thing. I love doing this and, and then playing over it because I can use this as, and the sounds that we're getting from this as its its own back background and its own uh, kind of uh, drum machine. Uh, so it ca comes for experimental that. composition, it's pretty interesting because then you may not get a result you expected out front, but that would change what you'd play when you're accompanying it, right? Yeah, and I kind of push it and follow it uh, uh, to those types of um, areas because I, I wanted, I mean, the whole thing is to be able to um, hear something new or right. to hear a new pattern that I, I wouldn't uh, think of myself, but then not to just hear it uh, like Cage did. He brings the stuff up, but here I, I follow it and I try to bring it out 
and try to, um, you know, kind of make something out of it, essentially. So while you're playing, you're not only adding that to the piece, but that's also adding interference to the algorithm, algorithms that are running here, right? Right, right. That's, uh, that's true. The uh, guitar, while I'm playing it, will um, have different effects um, and change not only the sound, but also the way that the uh, piece is, is adding together. Um, so it has um, you know, different effects as we go. And I can change the effects that it has as it, as it moves through. So it's, uh, it's a very rich piece. And while it's both minimal, because it, it, we're only using two clips and uh, um, and, and the uh, narration is minimal. It's also kind of maximal because I'm using all these colors. Um, and the last thing I'll show. It's an incredible um, like range, like I would say on a, uh, a visual range, right? There's this massive range of colors and brightness. Uh huh. So where's that piano coming from, one of the videos? Okay, this is one of the tone rows. Ah. And so this is one of the sequencers. And not only is it playing a tone <laughs> row of, of, of six notes and, and repeating it, but it's also choosing six shots and playing them in different ways. And so there's a still of showing a shot, there's the Simultaneous opposites, kind of jitter of showing a shot. There's playing it forward and playing it backward, all of which are available to it. And I can change the uh, tone row or change the area that's taking the shots by resampling it here. Hmm. So it's. Uh, and I find this is nice because sometimes the one gets too frenetic. Mm -hmm. And it's nice sometimes to calm down into this that's kind of a structured piece. And so we go from kind of freneticism. I can also simply turn off the algorithm that's jumping around and have the guitar itself um, do the jumping from frame to frame. We, I started that way the other night mm -hmm. uh, on that. So it's... Uh, That's kind of, um, that's where it's going. It makes a lot of difference, the, the type of uh, uh, source file I use, the sounds I use. Um, yeah, I think that's what's interesting about it is it's one method that you could use across. All you have to do is load a different video and you have a completely different result. But you as an artist can focus on perhaps your method with the engine. And then once you have that method down, you can switch the content out by simply swapping the videos, right? Right. Or in this case, along with the tones being changed for each of the 12 tones within the octave, every note is a different MIDI instrument. Mm -hmm. So we have 12 tone uh, serial composition in the, uh, in the uh, instrument choice as well. So if we go to Vimeo to see your, uh, I'll post a link to your uh, channel when I post this video. Um, the other things we'll get to see your progression with this, right? If you start with the early videos, you're, you're basically the videos document your the evolution of this whole idea and the process and the code is through time, right? So if we go out to your right. Vimeo channel, you can start at the beginning if you wanted and see the early work and right or, or see the the later work which is more rich right and then you can go back and see it started actually the first simultaneous opposites was a um, 16 millimeter film I shot in 1972 I think <laughs> uh, which was single framed in a, in a room on a tripod that still had this jumping quality and I realized a couple years ago that I could do that again but instead of having to sit down and laboriously go through, I could program the laborious part and then kind of ride the car uh, <laughs> uh, in real time. And instead of having to generate this thing and then watch it, I could jump into it 
and drive it as we went through. Right. And that's really the, um, the image behind all this is, is driving into the film.